Welcome to the Employee HR Podcast. I'm Rob Wilson. With me is my brother and partner, Scott. Hello. And Jason Eisenhut, our Vice President of HR. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new year. Welcome to the first podcast yeah. of 2024. You got Jackson working the board. He also goes Great as Nick usual. Navarro, right? <laughs> so trying to make it sound decent. Uh, so first podcast of the new year. We're going to talk a little bit about some HR trends, but uh, interesting survey that, that we just came out with uh, that Sherm did that... Uh, They've surveyed 3,500 employees uh, at a variety of different firms and found that only 31% of the employees were engaged, enthusiastic, or energized about their work. Yeah, so, so that's a big 70% that aren't engaged. That's right. a little scary. Right. Yeah. yeah, I guess the headline would be 70% 70, 70 <laughs> of people surveyed are not engaged or not just engaged or excited or are they bored at work. Right. And only 66% of the people here read the article. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That it's like our like our newsletters. You yeah, know, if you get a thirty percent open rate, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but so Jason, as you as you look at you know, today's marketplace, today's uh, is it more communication? Is it skill levels? Is it uh, what do you think is causing the 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 boredom or the you know unengaged? Yeah. Well, what was interesting is that over the like I mean, there's a ten year period where the employee engagement kept increasing. So from 2011 to 2021, that employee engagement creeped up a little bit. So employees were being a little bit more engaged, more engaged each year. And then around COVID, a little shortly after COVID, the bottom fell out a little bit. And it's not exactly when 2020 hit; it's more 2021, 2022 that the employee engagement came down a little bit. So we can't blame it all on COVID. Um, but maybe there's just such a heightened uh, sense of anxiety and stay with your employer and I don't know where things are going to be and then things calm down with immunizations and vaccines and people aren't dying. I mean, as much as people were worrying about that, maybe people at that point started to start to become bored and less heightened and aware. Well, what you can tell from the surveys is what size firms. Yeah, right. What size employees. So, you know, because yes, coming out of COVID, but then when you came out of COVID, so many large companies, uh, you know, they had such, so many people working from home that did that. And and now, you know, obviously the big trend in 24 is even, even in the large firms that are requiring people to come back to work. Yeah. And I think that would also, I agree with you, where it would lead people to, they're sitting at their desk all day. You know, and day after day, week after week, when they could be home doing their laundry while they're, quote, working. Or on, and, I mean, and on the reverse, if you, if you have less interaction, if you're working from home, uh, you, you've been in an office for 15 years. Right. Yeah, there's no commute anymore, but you, you don't have the interaction that you used to have. Especially the younger generations. The Generation Z, for example, thrives on in-person. They, they, maybe the people in their 30s for, or 40s, 50s have established themselves, established a good network and know what they're doing. But these younger generations, people in their teens or 20s or 30s, really, really need that in-person camaraderie and culture and network building and skills and education building. Yeah, and that's, I think, think our approach where we have company events, we tend to actually be more heavy in the first quarter right. than any other quarter. You know, we have a chili cook-off and just fun, interactive things because it's wintertime. We're in Chicago. The weather's terrible. Yeah, and, and, and you've got you know St. Patrick's Day and yeah. Mardi Gras and uh, opening MLB, and so there's a lot of March Madness, March right? Madness, a lot yeah. of things that happen in the and then you know the summer you do some outdoor things, but right, it, definitely, what do you do in the winter in Chicago? Right. And, and along those, so the, although the last or there was a ten year period where employee engagement was improving until around 2021, 2022, stress has continued. Then the, the percentage of employees who consider themselves stressed, a combination of work and home stress is still creeping up year after year. And now it's it's just, unfortunately, I mean, one of the things that we'll talk about at the end, things to do to improve, improve employee engagement, one of the things is to employers to focus on employee physical and mental health. That'll be a big way to improve in employee engagement. You know, I, th I think having conversations is, if people are uh, bored or they're calling it bored out uh, with boredom, if they're you know, not from engagement, but if they're bored with their job, you know, you should be doing your employee reviews more often. They they should become more conversational. Yep. You know, a, a two way informal street, yep. informal. Uh, the the days of the sit down in December and do a one time review. I mean those, you know, uh, aren't really the best right now. You should really have frequent conversations, whether it's monthly, you know, every other month. But you should have conversations with everybody in your on your team, and ask them the questions. What excites you about uh, about your work or your job? 
and and drill down on those. Yeah, it's th- these informal. It's, uh, ideally, managers are doing this once a week, but once a month at a minimum, impl- managers should be having these more informal meetings, one on one with their direct reports. And it doesn't have to be, hey, tell me about the projects you're working on, how's work. Let's get into some like, yeah, what what motivates you? What what, what excites you about work? Are, are you bored? You can get, like there are some questions that you can dig out from these conversations to where you can gauge your your and maybe they're not going to be completely upfront and open and honest if they're thinking about leaving but i think you can gauge on some of these subtle cues and nonverbal cues that you can start to get an idea of it right what on your what on your job or role exhausts you exactly that's a great question or what you know what don't you like about your role if we were going to change something in your role what would that be is there something that you're doing that you feel is monotonous and at the end of the day, it doesn't really do anything, but we've been, you know, and we just ran across this with a, a prospect. They they did the same thing every every time. And we said, well, why do you do that? Well, because you, you know, in our thought, you really don't need to do it anymore. And they came back and said, well, we've always done it that way. We've never thought of not right. doing it that way. Right. So if there's a better way to, you know, if, so if you can get those suggestions, Maybe it increases the, your employees' engagement as well. Well, and I, I like Jason's approach too. I think you're the first one to start it in our company where you actually have like how like your not lunch and learn, but your seminar peer to peer 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 seminar. So each person gets a chance to kind of. And I've done it in my own meetings with people that report to me. I always tell them each week bring one thing to the meeting that no one else knows that you do. That's great. Yeah. And then that way everyone's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So. Okay, years ago, the, well, we had uh, a lost girl person, and when we first started doing these uh, client report card meetings, someone in another department said, uh, it's this guy, Ron, who was with us for a long time, and he started talking about lost girl, what he's doing. They said, that's what you do? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. And we were small then, too. <laughs> right. So it, you know, getting, uh, but the peer-to-peer training, with you, what you do is great because it gives people a chance to eat a different person on Jason's team has a topic that yep. month and they present. So everybody, you know, it's a lunch and learn without the learn or without the lunch. And then also an opportunity for everybody else to go around, what are you working on? What are their challenges? So it's a good team communication. But, you know, the more questions you can ask your uh, your team members on yep. what excites you or what exhausts you. And we as a company, we are big fans of employee engagement surveys, the, the anonymous ones. So if your direct report, if your employees aren't completely feeling open and honest that they can be upfront with you, these employee engagement surveys will get a a pulse of your entire company culture. And maybe sometimes if you're big enough, you can do it by department or operational division, business unit. But um, we're at a size here where we just do the entire company. We don't divide the results by department or division. And it gives us an open, honest, and who look into how employees are feeling and their engagement in the company. And this was our first year that one of the questions, um, the way it was answered, it kind of came back vague. And this is the first year that we've done a follow-up survey to the survey just to get down to, you know, it was a communication issue. And it's like, okay, is it supervisor to supervisor? Is it management? Is it peer-to-peer? And it's the questions you put together for that were great. Yeah. So in, in your survey, you typically you're doing a uh, a third of them are – come out of SHRM, so we've got a, data, a large database. Another third come that we ask all our clients, so we've got a large database there, and then a third that are, you know, it, it, roughly, uh, that are specific to that client. And then I love the open-ended questions. Yeah. And that's where we dug down uh, internally on our team because it was, what do you, you know, what can be, what do you like best of, about working here? And a lot of it was team, culture, <laughs> communication, and then what can be improved uh, and some of it was communication. So you've got communication as a as a, positive. as a great positive and as a negative. So that, you know, we drilled down. So we're in the process of that right now of where where can that communication? Is it department to department? Is it supervisor to employee? Right. So adding those extra questions. So then when you put your focus group together, you've got a little bit more because a little bit more data, so it's not as as vague. Yeah, yeah, and I think your questions were great because I know some people, if they think that it's, well, they're going to know it's me the way I answer it, you don't ask questions like that. I mean, that because we want to give right. the people the uh, ability to be anonymous. Yeah, so. and that's one of the things when we when we roll out these every year, because you have new hires every year, and there's some turnover, um, that we really stress this is anonymous. In, in, our, in our survey platform, there is a way to track by 
full identifier as a name. There's a middle level where you can get IP address, but we show them that it is fully anonymous. We, right. we don't obtain any information on anyone. We kind of demo that each time to show everybody so they have confidence that they can really be honest with the survey. Yeah. And honest answers are what we want. I mean, if you get, you know, if you expect to get canned answers, why do the survey? Yeah, right. And hopefully a, a survey like that helps on the, the, the boredom issue and right. the engagement. Yeah, and get somebody more engaged. There are some other tips that we have about uh, improving that. Uh, some trends for uh, for 2024. Yep, yep. Um, so there are five trends to or six trends in HR that we're kind of expecting across the country, human resources and organizations to look at. One of them is artificial intelligence. Uh, so that's kind of sweeping the nation, not just in HR, but um, we're we're cautiously optimistic that that will help organizations. I just don't think it's going to be widespread in 2024, but right. something to keep your eye on. So what do you th- so what do you think the impact is on the HR side with AI? So I think the, in, in terms of HR, I think it will be organizations creating policies and trainings for the employees on how to use it. Like, should you be using AI to develop customer-facing communication? Should that be just, hey, I plug in some keywords, it spits out something in chat GPT, and I can use that in my, my customer-facing communication and pamphlets. I mean, is it, are we, it, there's organizations that will need to decide if that's okay or not. And and you can, you know, if you know someone, when someone sends me something, yeah. I'm like, okay, I know you did not write this. <laughs> but even, uh, even in today, you know, you got to do a post on Instagram or Facebook or some social media, and they all have the, the tags or plugins that says, would you like AI to rewrite this for you? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, but on the, you know, uh, on the HR side, it's policies and procedures. Yep. It, it can... It can help some firms if you need help writing HR policies, but I think you just need to be, you know, be careful and, and structure within the HR of how how businesses should use it. Yeah, and, and if you are using it to like answer baseline first level employee questions on, hey, what medical plan am I in? And there's an AI chatbot that's you're in the five hundred dollar deductible United Healthcare. Make sure that you're you have privacy controls in there that won't get that data out anywhere outside of who, who you think it should be entitled to that information. So there's some major concerns in terms of privacy and security there too. And make sure it's correct. Yeah, right. exactly. The AI, AI data is only as good as the data that's put in it. So it still doesn't have us as owners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the second uh, trend that we're monitoring is skill gap. So I think what we're seeing is more and more employers are still continuing to tell us they're having a tough time finding quality talent, quality employees out there. So what we're seeing is that employers are now focusing on, okay, I'm going to be a little bit more relaxed on the the experience and education that I used to look for in positions, and now I'm going to just search on the skills, and then I'll be able to train the right If I find the right person, I'll be able to train them for the, the, the position I'm hiring for. Right. Uh, third new trend is compliance rules. There's a plethora of HR-type employment laws out there that are changing every day, every month, uh, yeah. ranging... January, I was to say January of any year is never yeah. dull with you know, what year. I mean, that's great thing about our business. It changes every year. From paid leave to overtime rule coming out. Yeah, so you're gonna have, yeah, you're going to have the new overtime rule. Well, not rule, but uh, new salary cap, for, yeah. which you know it's going to go up. But the question is how high. Right. Yeah, yeah maybe that's 35000 to forty five or 55000 Well, let's kind of wait and see approach on that. And your tra- pay transparency. Yeah, that's a big one. So Illinois, for example, where our pay transparency law is kicking in January 1st of next year, 2025. Uh, but at that point, we'll join a host of other states that have already implemented where at, in job postings, where if you're posting a help wanted ad, you need to list that pay range in a pretty reasonable pay range of what you expect to pay for that position. 20 to 24 an hour, 50 to 60,000, whatever it might be. And you've got benefit laws, parenting laws, uh, uh, vacation or time off laws yeah. and you know, challenges so much of that is state by state so if you're if if you're a multi-state company you know even if you have uh you know say you're based in chicago or whatever florida but you've got 10 employees in each one in a random different, different state oh you have so com- complicated you have compliance in every state even if you have one person working from home in that state you've got to follow that state's rules yeah exactly yeah, and for example, then getting back to the Illinois uh, pay transparency. So January 2nd of next year, if I'm as an em- em- Illinois employer are posting a job and I hire someone in, I don't know, Iowa, where there's no pay transparency laws, but that remote person is going to report into a supervisor here in Illinois, we still need to put the pay range in the job ad. So it gets really, really complicated. Right. 
and it's a good thing about your HR team is we're active in all 50 states. So uh, you guys have a good, a good knowledge base and help our clients stay in compliance in all 50 states and the fine territory of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Love that. Number four on our list is return to work. As, as you mentioned, Rob, before, more and more organizations are asking their employees either full remote to go hybrid or some of the organizations that are hybrid to go less hybrid. I think we're going to see more and more employees return to the physical workspace uh, in 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you saw that a lot with the large companies that have been pretty easy with, you know, we'll give you four days remote or three days remote. You know, they're dropping that remote down to one day a week. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number five on our list is employee engagement, which we just spent a lot of time on. But basically, we're, we're seeing uh, still 70% of employees not engaged. And there's a variety of tips and tricks that uh, companies can do, like the one-on-one -on -one meetings, employee engagement surveys, um, make the, the employees' tasks or responsibilities, vary them up a little bit if the employee's been there for many years and change the kind of the, the pace or the type of work they're working on. Mm. And then last is competitive compensation. So Although last year was really, really high with inflation and wage growth, I think we're going to see a drop this year in terms of what companies are uh, not paying their employees, but the, the increase won't the be increase, as high right. uh, this year as compared to last year. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think last year it was in certain markets it was higher. We saw a higher wage increase here, and depending on the industry, uh, you, you saw us, and, and it was an employee-dominated market. Yeah, it is. So as it's, as it's flipped, tech is still struggling a bit. You're still having a, a number of industries uh, that are uh, that are not hiring or not hiring very much. So you you definitely see that increase lower, similar to what it was pre-COVID. Uh, you know, and and then where you see some other changes are your hourly and some of the hourly that's based on on the law in your in your city city county state because you've been a, and that's really more on your. Uh, whether it's temp workers, uh, restaurants, so you're going to see restaurant mm -hmm. in, uh, in in Chicago. They've uh, yeah, fast away. food's what twenty dollars an hour that it's going to be going up. To? Well, they've uh, your tipped employees are they're going to move those up to the regular Good wages, wage. right? Which and it's just going to be in Chicago. Won't apply to the rest of the state, so that's going to be a whole another yep. mess. But yeah, it, it's it's more of an employer. It's back to kind of an employer round. You've seen the jobless numbers and unemployment numbers are kind of stable up and down on new hire numbers. It'll be interesting to see what happens this year with, uh, with, the, with the new hire figures. And then you've got you know, a, an, another thing that they'll have to address is you've got uh, you know, 6 million Im illegal immigrants that have come into the country. Some states are giving you driver's license or work permits. So uh, that's a more becomes an I-9 issue and an exactly. immigration right. issue of, of, uh, of, you know, there's a big influx of people. Are they going to, are they, they going to work? Can they work? And if, if they're not working legally, you've got a whole immigration issue with yeah, your risk. company. Yep. Right. So I think that'll be a, a, a big issue this year, more so corporate than, but it definitely touches into the HR side. Heck yeah. Good point. Yep. So, well, I think you got through the top five. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so if you have any questions with any employee engagement or any of our top kind of trends we're looking out for for 2024, hr at com. we'd love to help. Um, we help our clients in a wide variety of ways, including all these topics that we just touched on. Right, yeah, happy to help if you have questions and have ideas for uh, f future podcasts. Check out our HR chats. Jason and I do an HR chat once a week for, uh, and we do uh, where this is a little bit, tip actually we went a little bit longer today, but usually we try and keep these about 15 minutes. Our HR chats once a week, they're a, you know, a quick topic, two, three minutes. Uh, you Typically you can see us uh, on our, our site, on, well, on our website as well as on LinkedIn. And social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Right. I don't know if we post our HR chats on, on Twitter, but uh, Jackson's shaking his head no, but I can. I can. <laughs> Someday. I, I will, I'll start posting on uh, on uh, Twitter as well, or X, right, on X. You yeah. still call it. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for joining us uh, this month for our first, uh, first podcast at 24. Thank you. Have a great right. year.